Howdy folks, welcome back. Uh, at the beginning of the last video, I said I would explain why all the changes going on uh, right now, why I'm slow to the videos, why there's a ring light now, uh, different background, and <laughs> I said I was going to do that at the end of the last video. I'm not going to do it at the beginning of this one because it kind of ties into this. Um, so I'm, I'm not home. This isn't my home. Uh, this is family's home. I had to help some family uh, away from my home. I live in Spruce Grove and I'm in Kimball, uh, which is a seven hour drive away from my home south. And if you haven't heard of Kimball, that would be a surprise because it's a bustling metropolis of 26 people. And uh, it, it's located uh, where the prairies meet the mountains. You can see the US border from here. So, you know, southwest corner of Alberta. Not quite Waterton, but just outside of it. Very beautiful place. Um, Anyways, and then now I have a ring light and I'm using my phone and that has to record videos. Uh, so I'm not sure the difference in quality lighting, uh, the outside of lighting because the ring light has helped with that. Um, their quality seemed similar. Again, light, the ring light helps. Now it adds another reflection in my glasses, which kind of, I, I was about to say I'd given up caring about, but I, I no, I still care about it whatever um let's get right into the game uh unfortunately i wasn't able to watch all of it i was able to listen to uh the vast majority of it and fortunately cam moon the commentator for the oilers radio network when jack michaels isn't is very good at uh describing the pace of play what's going on um and all that stuff so you get a pretty good idea and then, excuse me I'm impatient, so I'm not going to do another take because it's a small freaking burp. It could be a loud one. It could be 30 seconds long. I'm like, hey, 30 seconds long. Keep it in there. That might go viral. But anyways, uh, so he, I, I got a pretty good idea of the game, and I, I would watch the highlights afterwards. Um, so uh, starting, we're in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Uh, first period, no, I should say, uh, it, it's kind of weird. It was kind of weird entering this game because historically when the Oilers play the Stars It's going to be a, a Bloodbath not in the sense of a lot of scoring or one one side just Dallas has historically been a very defensive brutish team where uh, Darian Hatcher would be a star defensive defenseman pun actually not in, um, intended Usually they are. I like puns. That was not intended. Star defensive. Yeah, there you got it now. Uh, so, anyways, stars have usually been very defensive. Now they are very fast. They are a very fast team. They still have uh, some good defensive defensemen. I think Essa Lindell does not get enough credit for his defensive work. Uh, Ryan Suter, even even though his role is much smaller now that he's older. Uh, doesn't get enough credit either. So, but anyways, the Stars are a much faster team. Not only that, this year they score more than the Oilers. It's weird to prepare for a game when you're playing against a team that scores more than you do. Uh, and normally that'd be a concern for the Oilers if not our defense having been top 10 this year. Uh, so uh, the game ended up being pretty entertaining uh, of all the games I could have missed, this one, this one is not one I w would have wanted to miss. I don't want to miss any of them, and technically I didn't miss it. It's just I just mean you know watching it too, because uh, it was pretty fast back and forth, but the shots were low, um, because again both these teams are very fast, and uh, I was worried that with how fast the game would be, that Nurse and CC would uh, be kind of slow, and I'll get to them uh, at the end. And uh, then we heard what the top line was, and this was interesting. It was uh, McDavid and Drysdale were combined with Corey Perry. Uh, now Corey Perry ha has been a fourth liner for the last couple seasons, but this year he's played himself into more of a middle six role. He was uh, all things considered good in Chicago, and he got his first goal as an Oilers last game, and. Uh, it was so it was an interesting idea i figured 
you know, well, with how fast this game could get, I don't mind loading up McDavid and Drysaddle because they, they, when the game is fast, you want those two together. But having Perry, who is very smart on his positioning, uh, would be a way of where if McDavid and Drysaddle screw up on a rush, Perry isn't fast enough to join the rush, so he's already back and ready. And if McDavid and Drysaddle aren't able to get something going in the offensive zone, uh, Perry is different, different enough of a player to add uh, something else of his own, which he would, and um, get down low and score, which he did. Uh, we'll get to that, but first was the first period, because that's how it works. Not the second or third, or the fourth period comes first, it's the first period. Uh, you probably already knew that. I hope you did. And the shots were low, even though it was pretty back and forth. The orders led the first period in shots seven to six. Uh, neither team had much uh, possession, like much, ch much chance to have sustained pressure until the end of the first when Dallas would draw a penalty. And uh, the Oilers kill off the first 30 seconds of, or so in time for first intermission. So, woohoo! But they didn't kill it enough off in the second period. Mason Marchment scores that from uh, with Dusheen and White Johnson. Duchesne and Wyatt Johnston uh, assisting. So the woes for Edmonton's penalty kill continues. Um, but we didn't have to wait long for an answer. 55 seconds later, Evan Bouchard uh, scores his 13th goal. That is now a career high for him. And he's assisted by Eckholm and Corey Perry, who will continue to be mentioned. Um, two minutes, no, almost closer to three minutes later, Dallas takes the lead again. That's Thomas Harley from Heisken and Duchesne. Um, this time even strength. And not even, or just over two minutes later, the Oilers would answer again to tie it up for the second time already in less than seven minutes of second period play. Uh, it's Corey Perry. His goal, second goal in two games with the Oilers. And second point of the game, he's assisted by McDavid and Dreisaitl. So that line is working pretty good. Uh, well, I told my dad, you know, I, I was interested in the line, but I, I wasn't like super excited by it. I was I was interested. In, well, we'll see. It could be could be good. You know, make David and Dreisel together are always good, but is Perry gonna be the best compliment? He was to that night or tonight or this afternoon actually. Or yesterday afternoon, because it's now two o'clock, because I hate technology, it's two o'clock Sunday morning. <laughs> ah. Anyways, it's 2 2, second period, and then uh, it, goals wouldn't come in until the end of the second period, where the Warriors once again find themselves on the penalty kill. Uh, Derek Bryan, he gets a takeaway, uh, becomes a two on one, he gives it to Nuge, who gives it back, and uh, Ryan's able to score on that. Uh, it's a shorthanded goal, and it's woo, penalty kill's back, we got a shorthanded goal, and then that same. Uh, penalty kill allows a power play goal 20 seconds later. Uh, that's Matt Duchene for his third point of the game. Assist by Marsh Marshman for his second point of the game. And Harley for his second point of the game. And so, uh, I get, you know, when you score shorthanded, it, it more nullifies the power play goal. So it's kind of a, well, at least we kind of, we scored kind of way um but still happy for Derek Ryan I'm a big Derek Ryan fan uh big I'm a big fan of most Oilers but I mean especially Derek Ryan there's some personal biases that uh go to that but I don't need to get into that so anyways that second period was much busier it would be by far the busiest period because the first period had only well you know I'll just combine the first and third period because there wasn't any goals in the third period all the goal scoring came in the second period, so counting goals alone, the second period was busiest, but even the shots department, uh, there was a total of 26 shots between the two teams in the second period, 16 of which were for the Stars. But in the first and the third, which were uh, barely controlled by the Oilers in the shots department, had a combined shots of only 24. So yeah, much busier second period, whereas the third period just kind of the, the same story of the first period. Where it's, you know, back and forth and you're getting lots of speed, but not a lot of good chances to uh, shoot. 
Uh, speaking of shooting, I, I neglected to mention that uh, Picard was starting. Uh, usually, we, there was lots of expectation that Skinner was going to start against the Stars. Um, and uh, a, my thoughts were happy for Picard, for one. That's, that was my first thought. But I'll, a little confusion because, again, Skinner has been very good. He had a hiccup against the Blues, not entirely his fault. That's the previous video. It's a great video. You should watch it. I think listening to my voice is a great idea any time of the day. Um, maybe not in church or during a funeral. Well, maybe during a funeral. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, but I figured the Oilers play pretty, pretty well in front of Picard. Uh, so maybe this would uh, be kind of a wake-up call to the Oilers to say, hey, you suck in front of Skinner against the Blues. Uh, take some responsibility, play better. Uh, and and it's also good for Picard to challenge himself against uh, a stronger team. He played well against the Devils, who aren't in a playoff spot right now, but they're still a pretty good team. And he won both of his games against the Devils. And uh, he, he's been, he was 6-2 and two coming into this. And... Um, he, he wasn't great, uh, but I'll, I'll get to more of him later. But that was my thoughts was it, I think it would give make the Oilers play more responsibly, responsible, which they did, but the bar that was set against the Blues was pretty low. So <laughs> maybe they would have anyways uh, if Skinner was in net. I hope they would have anyways, but regardless, they played better. And um, I, probably in part because Picard was playing. And uh, again, Picard was able to... Uh, prove himself against the stars, but I'll go come back to Picard. Let's go to the OT period and don't worry I only have to cover 30 seconds of it because uh, it starts with dry cell McDavid and Bouchard uh, out of course um, Why wouldn't it be? There are some exceptions, but in a fast game like this, it's those three are out dry saddle wins the face off uh, The orders come down. I believe dry cell ended up with the puck and he was going to have a beautiful opportunity before a star player, I believe it was Robertson, doesn't really matter, uh, was took a penalty, hooked dry saddle because if they didn't hook dry saddle, it was going to be a goal. Um, but, you know, if he had stats on his mind, it's like, oh, well, the Oilers are one for three for today, one for three last year. Yes, they broke the power play record last year, but the power play has been kind of slow. Still pretty good, though, but, you know, you know, we, we have a better chance of kill, killing an Oilers penalty than letting dry saddle have a, a wide net. And, uh, well, it didn't take long. Dry Saddle wins the face off uh, in the, for the power play. Bouchard gets it, kick, takes a couple seconds, and he snipes it in for the game winner in overtime. I, I, I'm not going to do the voice because it's two in the morning on our family uh, sleeping. <laughs> Hopefully, they're not hearing too much of this. I'm not disturbing them. If you don't know what voice I'm referring to, Jack Michaels, best commentator in the game. Probably some bias from me, but I, he is awesome regardless. Uh, but, uh, uh, even though I was listening to Camus, who, does, who, did, uh, who did a great job, but I'm sure Jack Michaels did a great job, and I did hear him on the highlights. Uh, it's always good to hear his over, overtime calls. Anyways, uh, back to the topic at hand. So that was Bouchard's second snipe of the game, and I do mean snipe because uh, both of those were calculated snipes where he uh, had some room to aim, and he doesn't need much time to get power behind his shot. Uh, neither of them were really slap shots or clappers. They, they, but they were still powerful shots as Bouchard tends to deliver. And they're both very accurate high shots that went over Ottinger. Um, and that one was the game winner. Uh, only took 30 seconds of extra time. And uh, I, while I was helping moving boxes, I did a big... <laughs> and, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a really exciting game, even from being limited to the radio. Oh, it's not really a radio because I was streaming it, streaming the radio. But uh, anyways, uh, shots were a little low. It was Oilers only had twenty four shots uh, compared to twenty seven for the Stars. But again, it, it's pretty comparable. You're not going to lose sleep over having three less shots than the Stars especially when you win against a pretty good team. The Stars, uh, the other confusing part about Pickard starting is the Stars aren't exactly slumping. They are coming off 
three straight wins, including a 9-2 uh, destruction of the uh, Predators. I believe. Yeah, it was the Predators on Thursday night. And we'll get to Picard. I've said that a couple times now. Uh, Face-offs were pretty even. Um, hits. Oilers out hit. This was a heavy hitting game. I didn't mention the hits in the last game against the Blues because there wasn't that much. Um, but the Blues did out hit the Oilers uh, barely. Whereas this one, the Oilers, even though the Stars got 25 hits, which is quite a, a large amount, the Oilers had 31 of their own. Uh, you don't need hitting to win a game, and you don't need hitting to lose a game either. But it always feels better when you out hit an opponent during a win. And it always feels worse when you got out hit during a loss. The Oilers got out hit against the Blues, not by a large margin, but still, you got out hit by the Blues and you lost. And that just adds to the pain. It's like salt to the wound. Whereas this, it's like, I don't know what the opposite of salt to the wound is, the positive side, I don't know. Um, putting a lemon in your Diet Pepsi. I like, I like putting lemon in my Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke. I do have a preference. I can, <laughs> I can do another video on that if I want, uh, and I can. I love soda, so uh, that that was again awesome that the Oilers were able to uh, win in a physical and fast game that the Dallas Edmonton game was. Uh, Picard was twenty four for twenty seven, not so bad. Uh, that's good, and uh, he. It's something you can win with. There were a couple goals. He definitely wished he could have had it back. Uh, he also wished maybe he could have his clearing attempt back when he almost took off, I think it was Marshman's head. You, you can look it up. He went to clear a puck and he lost a little control and <laughs> the puck almost took off a Stars player head on the bench and he put his glove up. Sorry, sorry. It was kind of funny. But nobody was hurt, so we were allowed to laugh. Um... Power play for the Oilers was one for four. Uh, penalty kill was two for three. Oh no, sorry, it wasn't two for three, it was one for three. It was pretty bad, actually. Um, and then Ottinger, fortunately, wasn't the force that he can be. He's been pretty up and down this year. Uh, I think he has elite caliber goaltending in him, but he's too young and too inexperienced for that to be consistent yet. So uh, a lot of analysts, I should say analysts and fans, like to overrate him. Uh, still don't underrate him, but uh, fortunately we got one of his uh, um, stinker performances today. He was only 20 for 24, granted. Uh, some of those shots were pretty hard to save. Uh, into three stars, you can guess the first star. Uh, again, all orders, because the stars... Oh, I'm seeing stars a lot. The Dallas stars... Had some stars of their own worth mentioning. But of the Oilers' three stars, uh, <laughs> Bouchard is the uh, first star. He's not a lone star. See, I do like my bad jokes. Uh, he had two goals, including the game winner. Uh, he had heavy ice time in which the Oilers controlled over three quarters of the expected goals for and just over two thirds of the shots while he was on the ice. So very good possession numbers, defense numbers, and of course, offense numbers. He's now at a career high 14 goals on the season. That's one back from the lead leaguing uh, Mackenzie Weger with 15 goals by a defenseman. Uh, he's having a great season. I'm very happy for Weger, even if ten tonight was pretty tough for Calgary. Uh, it, it, I've mentioned in the last few that I, I like Calgary. But seeing those, it's kind of seeing the score that they had getting demolished by Detroit. Uh, I don't remember what the score was. I know it was 5 nothing at one point. It's kind of, I think it was 9-2 to two it ended. There was a couple games that ended 9-2. to And I was, it was kind of where half of me felt bad for Calgary. And the other half just laughed. It's weird. My relationship with the Flames is so weird. Uh, but anyways, the <laughs> second star. I went into talking about Calgary before even finishing the three stars, and this is now a 20 minute video. Uh, whatever. Uh, Dry Settle is the second star. He had two assists, uh, three hits, and uh, excellent possession numbers. 83% expected goals for the orders controlled while he was on the ice. 
and 68.2% of the shots while Drysdale was on the ice. And Perry was your third star. He had a goal and assist, two hits. Uh, his possession numbers weren't as impressive, but they were still both uh, decent. 59.3% of expected goals for while he was on the ice, and 55.6% of the shots. Uh, shots on goal, I mean, not shot attempts. So, uh, very good performances. And uh, as a bonus, I wanted to talk about Nurse and Cece. Maybe I'd, I'll do an, uh, an extra video on this. I think I will actually uh, do a different video on Nurse and Cece because there's lots to talk about there. Um, usually when people, or fans talk about Nurse and Cece, it's like, oh no, what did they do? They did good. They've been doing great, actually. Uh, it's been, I was, I alluded to earlier that I was worried that Nurse and Cece would be too slow for this kind of game. They were not. Uh, they had a very excellent game. Uh, they had uh, excellent possession numbers, and I combined their expected goals for while on the ice over the last two games because they had excellent possession numbers against the Blues as well. So in the two games, the last two games combined, Nurse and CC had 20, 27 minutes and 34 seconds of even strength time. And uh, I would say 60% of expected goals for is, or just over that, is elite. And the Oilers, while well, Nurse and CC on, are on the ice, it's not just 70, it's not, it's not even just 80, it's 90%. 90% for Nurse and CC, who were the bane of our existence last year, are playing elite defensively in the last two games. They've been very good defensively all season. I think Nurse is playing as a $9 million defenseman right now. I still don't think the contract should be $9 million, but he's been awesome this year. Uh, CC has been, I wouldn't say awesome, but he's had awesome moments this year and a lot less CC moments. It's more like CC moments, not in that light tone. I just don't want to wake up people. I probably already have. Maybe they're not even asleep. It's 2.17 in the morning. But uh, <laughs> again, I wanted to get these videos out. And uh, thank you very much for sticking this far and to this big rant about the stars and the orders that took longer than I thought. Um, it is, like I said, late, so I'm trying to remember how to say goodbye on a video. I need to get rest. I got early ch church. It's in seven hours. I've still got a shower and stuff. Anyways, thank you very much. I hope you've earned, I, I, I hope, uh, Isaac, think. <laughs> I hope I have earned your like for a video, even a comment. And hopefully subscription, whether I'm your whether I'm informative or just white noise, even a bit of both, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy that you have watched any amount of my video. Hopefully it's a lot of it. Um, I do have actual analysis videos, uh, plan, plans to do, and not just Oilers reviews. Uh, I'm just doing Oilers reviews right now while I'm in uh, Southern Alberta. But uh, again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. I will see you Monday for the Oilers A's Coyotes games. I will probably be late because I'm driving back north during that. I'll see. I will definitely be listening to the game. I'm not sure if I can watch it. We'll try to watch it. Might find a place in Calgary that's playing an Oilers game. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely have that review out uh, when I get a chance. Hope to see you all then, and more than just you too. Tell your friends that would be great. Or, or your family, all that kind of stuff, or anybody who might need white noise. Uh, have a great night, and thank you very much. Once again, I can't say that enough. Bye-bye for now.